Okay, so I am excited today to introduce a new adhesive. Um, about a year ago, we launched the all season sprayable adhesive uh, for TPO and EPDM single ply membranes. And I'm excited to announce that this quarter, we are gonna be bringing to market a similar product, but for PVC. Uh, it's called JM PVC all season sprayable adhesive has a lot of similarities with our current product offering, and it also has some differences as well. So uh, today we're gonna introduce you both to the parts and pieces and to the adhesive itself, review the application, and uh, kind of go through common questions and concerns that uh, you might run into when you're talking through this with your customers. I'm Derek Nickham. I am the PBC and EPDM product manager, and I'm joined today by Jonas. Jonas, would you like to kind of Give us a little bit of background here. Uh, I think you covered it pretty well, Derek. It's a, it's a spray adhesive for our PVC membranes, both the KE and the SD Plus versions. Uh, it's in a 30 pound cylinder here. Uh, we have spray guns with extended nozzles and the short nozzles. We also have hoses in six and 12 foot lengths. Uh, there'll be options for three different spray nozzles themselves. Those are gonna cover uh, different angles so it uh, helps with environmental conditions like wind. So you want the, neg the, uh, the narrower one, which is gonna be a 6501. Uh, the guns should ship with a 8001 nozzle. And then uh, for if you have a very still condition, you can open it up to the 9501 nozzles. Okay, and uh, I believe later on today, we're gonna actually do a demonstration showing those various nozzles and how they spray out with the different patterns. Yeah, we're gonna try to cover what that looks like from a, a spray width pattern at a set height. Got it. So there's uh, one of the things that we have kind of that's unique to this product family compared to a bunch of our other products, especially when it comes to accessories is there's a lot of parts and pieces. You were just talking through the various guns, nozzles, hoses. We've got some other stuff that's out here. Um, Earlier we were talking about this. Uh, this is a heating blanket. Uh, we use it to help keep the canisters warm when it's the ambient air temperatures are too cold. Uh, can you talk us through what some of the restrictions are with the adhesive? Meaning, you know, what temperature does it need to be during with, with storage, and then what temperatures are we looking at during uh, application? Yep. So for storage, we're going to re recommend 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, application temperature is ideal at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's what the blanket is set to. Um, we're going to have, you know, like obviously you're going to want to try to keep those canisters warm, but as you use them, if the ambient conditions are a little bit cooler, it, they're going to cool off. So once that canister gets down to about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, you're going to want to rotate that back into the, to the warm room so that uh, it starts warming back up and grab another one that's warm if you don't have one of the blankets. Uh, on the upper end, you don't ever really want to store the canisters above 95 Fahrenheit. And uh, from an application, like maximum temperature during application would be like 120 F for your, you know, uh, Southern really warm states in the summertime. Got it. And then some of these other things that we have on the table, uh, this is the, the flush. This is used for cleaning uh, out the hoses and the guns. Is that accurate? Yeah, you're gonna use that whenever you're done with the job and you're not going directly to another job and you wanna like keep your hoses and your guns ready for the next time you have a, a job come up. So that's what you'd use there. We've also got our uh, single ply membrane cleaner over here. That's uh, it's a really good cleaner to use for touching up uh, the hoses, the ends of the nozzles, especially to, uh, to unclog those. I typically like to take my nozzle off at the end of the day, put it into a, a jar full of the solvent so that whenever you get there the next day, it's ready to go fully clean. You don't have to worry about any clogs or anything like that. Nice. And then the last two pieces that we've got, um, they're tools. Uh, they're kind of tools that might be useful when either hooking up uh, the hoses, the guns, the nozzles, um, or possibly during application. Can you explain, I guess, what the ideal wrench is uh, for working with this equipment and then also what this roller is used for? Yep, I prefer just to have a couple of adjustable wrenches, Derek. Um, there's three or four sizes by the time you get to the fittings and the nozzles and the collets and things like that. So trying to keep track of all of those individual wrenches is kind of a pain. So I like to stick with just two adjustable wrenches. That gives us the, the benefit of uh, getting everything tight there that we'll go through in our setup here in a minute. Uh, and then over closer to you, you've got that, that roller and that's really gonna be an ideal tool for whenever you're you know, doing walls and you wanna get that good pressure on the, the vertical surfaces. So it gives you the T-handle, put the pressure on, the extended wand. So I really like those whenever it comes time to, uh, to do your vertical walls. 
All right, so moving on to the actual setup of the equipment. Um, like to kind of walk everybody through step by step how to hook up the hose to the canister, the gun, uh, set up the gun to make sure it's uh, spraying properly, and then also um, any kind of watch areas, safety related stuff, uh, checking for leaks, things like that. So can you, can you start us off? Sure, yep. So uh, just to kind of go over the parts again, we've got the guns, they come assembled. Um, We've got a nozzle in this one, but the nozzle's not in the right direction, so we'll adjust that here in a second. Then we've got our 12-foot hose and the canister. Um, on the gun itself, there's a trigger lock here, so you want to make sure that this is turned all the way forward so that the, sque the trigger cannot be squeezed. That's going to be one of our safety precautions once we get everything hooked up so that it doesn't accidentally uh, discharge. Uh, as far as adjusting the nozzle here, we really want this to be in plane with the gun. That's generally the kind of the easiest. So that's where the two adjustable wrenches are gonna come in handy. So we wanna get that. And while you're doing that, I know there are some canister adhesives that recommend um, shaking up the canister prior to use. Is any of that needed with this adhesive? This adhesive does not benefit from that, so it is not recommended. Um, the most specific thing that we want to do there, though, is we want to make sure that we're not moving the canister around while we're actually spraying. So that's going to, we've got a pickup tube down towards the bottom. If you move it around, there's a chance it's going to draw air and it's not going to be as consistent of a spray pattern as you'd like. Got it. And so, I would assume making sure you're working with the proper length hose um, helps with that. I mean, we were just talking, do we want to hook up the six foot or the 12 foot? I thought the 12 foot might be best for what we're going to be spraying later. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, you know, you just got to be cognizant of the space that you have, how far you're going to be away. If you've got somebody that's going to be helping with moving the canister for you, or if you're going to be the one that's moving the canister as you go, stuff like that. You know, if you're in a tight spot up against a wall and you're using the short gun, the short hose might make sense because you're moving the canister with you. Uh, I think we even have an 18 in the offering. So if you're really trying to, to spread out and get some, some stuff done before you have to move the canister each time. Great. So. Uh, I personally like to hook up the gun first. So we're gonna come in, find the fitting that fits to the gun. I'm gonna thread that on. So this is obviously the first time these are being hooked up, but uh, from a storage standpoint, after somebody has hooked up a hose to a gun and at the end of a job and they wanna reuse it, do they need to disassemble everything or can they flush it out and keep things uh, assembled for, for ease of use? You know, if you're going from job to job, Derek, you can actually leave it hooked up to the, the canister or hook it up to a brand new full canister and then get it turned back on. Um, if you're gonna have some time in between and you wanna make sure that you don't have anything set up in your hose and things like that, it's recommended that you, you know, close the valve, discharge any pressure that's in the hose, then lock the trigger, you're gonna take the hose off, then you would hook it up to a can of the flush that we have over here, and then, you know, rinse through to make sure that there's nothing inside that's gonna dry over that course of time. But you can go just from canister to canister uh, from that perspective, following the this proper safety protocol, obviously. How long can it stay, um, I guess, technically in storage between jobs if it's staying on the same canister after it's been? Assuming that the canister is not totally empty and there's still some in there, I think 30 days is probably going to be the longest you're going to want to leave that just hooked up with nothing. Okay. Uh, like we talked about earlier, I like to pull the nozzles off the end of the guns and store those in a little bit of solvent so that they, they don't get plugged up. But the needle that's in the bottom of this uh, seals well enough. And then as long as there's pressure from the canister with some adhesive, it will stay liquid. Excellent. So our next step on the, uh, the installation here, I just want to make sure we're not tangled up and take the hose and hook it up to our canister. You want to get it nice and snug. You don't want to twist it off, but you also don't want it to be too loose so that way you don't have to worry about any leaks because we're getting pretty close to that point. Right now we've got the hose hooked up to the canister, the hose is hooked up to the gun. We've got the trigger lock forward on the gun so there's no, no way to discharge. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna crack the, the valve here, let some adhesive in, start filling into the hose, and we're gonna listen for leaks and kind of look around for leaks. You know, if we have any leaks, it's gonna come at this connection here or the connection down here where the hose comes in, so. And that's just a visual and audio um, 
checking that there's, there's no sort of equipment or anything that you need in order to check for leaks? Correct. Okay. Yep. So I cracked that about a quarter of a turn. I don't see any leaks coming from here or here. So I'm going to go ahead and open the valve all the way open and then back in like an eighth to a quarter. So that's going to be where we want to leave it for the application. We'll adjust anything that we need to do on a pressure regulation side from that safety lock down here on the trigger of the gun. Is there ever any reason to slightly close that more than that eighth of a turn uh, during application? Or you just set it and forget it there until it's it's empty? You're going to set it and forget it and let it run till it's empty on that point. Yep. Nice. Yeah, you do all your your limiting of pressure and stuff from the gun here as opposed to back of the canister. Okay. Well, I think that's all we've got for this section. I don't have any other questions. Um, anything that comes to mind that you'd like to cover? No, I think we're in good shape, Derek. Let's get the, the table out of the way and some membrane down and start spraying. All right. So Jonas, before we start spraying this, I uh, wanted to quickly discuss some differences between this and our current all season sprayable that we have. So um, as you start spraying this out, can you be sure to make sure we're kind of addressing the visual differences so that people aren't surprised if they've been using our previous adhesive when they start to spray this one? Yeah, I think it'd, uh, it'd be a little bit more apparent whenever we start spraying Derek, right. uh, but to kind of touch base on some of those things up front so we can pay attention as the spray is going down. Uh, the coverage rate is gonna be about 500 to 600 square feet per canister, dependent on uh, substrate. And then the adhesive itself is a little bit more of a wet adhesive. So, um, you know, the original all season spray oil, the EPDM TPO version, it's kind of like light and topical and it floats on top of facers. This is gonna be a little bit more wet of an adhesive. So it's gonna wet into facers and onto the back of the membrane a little bit more. Okay. So you'll notice that as we start to spray. Got it. And then what sort of flash times are we looking at? So whenever we talk about like application temperatures, that's really where the flash times are gonna come into play. Um, so installation of this product is 25 degrees and rising. Um, down at the 25 degree mark, as long as we've kept our canister warm, like we talked about previously, it's gonna be you know, 13, 15 minutes on the flash off time. Okay. Then as we start to get warmer, that's gonna come back down. So from about 40 and rising, it's gonna be in the three to five minute range. So there's a pretty sharp you know, decline in time between the 20 and 40 degree range. Got it, so, so when you're talking three to four minutes and it's a two-sided application, not a one-sided, correct? So that we've gotta apply it to both the field, the, to the substrate, to the back of the membrane, and they have to do that in enough time so that it doesn't set up too far before they roll it in. So how much, I mean, about how much square footage can they cover can somebody cover um, before they start to roll it in? Yeah, so the flash time is gonna be the, the time that they have to wait before they can put it together. And then the open time is really gonna be the one that talks about how long it can stay open. So uh, that's really like a 30 minute max. So they've got pretty good window between like the five minute mark and the, the 30 minute mark to get a fair amount of material out. Okay. So it's, you're not working, you know, like foot from foot. You can, you know, you're gonna have quite a bit that you can put so down. So it's not a big rush. Correct, yeah. correct. All right, you wanna start spraying some adhesive. Yep, okay, so we've got our nozzle set up. Um, I generally think that, you know, about a six foot spray path is, is pretty good. And I'm always gonna to stand towards like th my left third because I'm right-handed. Why do you do that? So ergonomically, I can reach way further to the right as opposed to reaching across my body and having to turn to get to the other. So I can, I can get from this six foot mark over to here, where if I stood in the middle of the sheet, I would have to turn my body and twist, and it puts kind of an arc into the spray, and we wanna keep this nice and flat as we go across. Okay. It's got the same 50% overlap that you see in the other all-season sprayable. Uh, generally speaking, you'd like your, your gun to be as vertical as possible, somewhere between 12 and 18 inches off of the, the deck, so you're gonna get uh, a little bit of spray. And like you said, it's two-sided, we've got the 50% overlap, so let's, let's give it a whirl. Here. This is the 8001, Derek, and um, so it's coming out a little bit wet. 
So we didn't do a lot of pre-purge on that hose before we started. So I think you'll see it start to pick up, widen out in the spray pattern as we go through a little bit here. Okay. All right, so I'm no application expert, but looking at that, I can tell it doesn't look right. Can you explain what, what we think is going on and then what, what we need to adjust? Yeah, it's essentially a low pressure uh, condition, Derek. So whenever you've got the, the trigger lock here, the further you take that back, the more pressure you're gonna allow to come through. So uh, whenever we started spraying, we had that down too far uh, to where we weren't allowing enough pressure to come out. So now that we've opened that up, you'll see the fan pattern start to open up. It won't be wet and streaky like this is. Okay, so as you can see, that opened up the fan pattern a lot. The coverage is way more consistent. It's bleeding into the facer a little bit, you know, so it's pretty even from that perspective. So definitely a low pressure condition that you see up there. So you definitely want to check your gun, make sure your valve is open all the way whenever you get to that point. So we're spraying the paper face ISO here. Is there a certain visual that you're looking for that indicates that you're pushing down the right amount or that you're getting the coverage you want? Um, you know, visually you want it to cover the vast majority of the facer that you see down there. I am operating in kind of like my internal metronome. So I've sprayed this a few times to know to get to that, that spray, uh, spray rate coverage rate. So I've got a count going in my head, one, two, three, four, five, or whatever it is, you know, depending on the nozzle that you have, your environmental conditions, things like that. And then I noticed you're getting a little bit of buildup on the nozzle. How often or does that ever need to be cleaned during application? And if so, how, how should they be doing that? It generally doesn't impact it too much, Derek, because once you start spraying it, it'll push that off. Um, but if you wanted to have a rag handy with some of that low VOC membrane cleaner, you can just wipe that nozzle every so often. I do that anytime that you're going to stop. But if you've got a continuous spray going, it's probably just going to blow that off onto the to the face or the, the membrane at some point. Okay, and then do we need to do any sort of back rolling with this adhesive? We do not. So this is gonna be the application that you're gonna to wanna to see on the, the facer side of things. We're gonna flip over and do the membrane side. So here we're at our like, you know, three-ish minutes on this end. So we gotta get that sprayed so that we can start to roll that in. Once we get that membrane sprayed, we're gonna roll the membrane in and then we're gonna broom it down and then we're gonna hit it with a linoleum roller to get it sucked down tight. Sounds good. overlap on this uh, on the back side of the membrane as well uh, is the coverage rate a little bit better on the membrane or are you still using about the same the same pace the same overlap as you were on the substrate it's going to be almost the same um, you know it, it really comes down to the porosity of things so porous surfaces like paper face or over there on the energy three are going to absorb a little bit more it's going to float on top of this a lot like it will the CGF that you'll see uh, spray onto here in, in a few minutes um, but this is generally gonna be closer to that 600, maybe 625 square feet per gallon on this part. And you're at the, the 500-ish square feet per gallon over there, or per canister over there. Okay, and we're using this currently with, um, I, I believe this is our KEE membrane that we're using in this, this uh, example, this trial that we're running right now. Can this adhesive be used with both our KEE product and our SD Plus membrane? Yes, it's got good adhesion to both. All right, so here we are. We're gonna finish flying this membrane in. So get a little fluff underneath, 
should roll right across the top, bonding these two surfaces together. And when we get to this point, we're gonna to wanna to broom it first. So you wanna go cross machine or perpendicular to the length of the roll from the center out. So you're gonna get some pressure that way and come back. So we're pushing out any kind of, you know, air bubbles or trapped air as it comes across. And after we get done with the broom, we're gonna hit it with a, a linoleum roller or a lawn roller. So uh, I've got a 75 pound linoleum roller here. I'm gonna go across and back and forth in a, a W pattern. That W pattern is like the thing that you would paint your wall with. So back and forth, making sure that the membrane and the substrate are making good contact all the way across. As you're grooming it in or rolling it in, are there, are there any watch areas? Is there really anything that you can do to mess up this process? I mean, if we were really diligent on the front end, Derek, where we had good spray patterns, we let it flash off the proper amount of time, there weren't any wet spots, things like that. As long as you didn't push any wrinkles in, when you were flying the membrane in, you should be in good shape. This is Protector HD, it's one of our uh, cover boards with a coated glass facer on it. Uh, Jonas, is there any sort of preparation that's needed on any of these substrates before we, uh, before we spray them? You know, same with regular general roofing practice. You want it to be clean, dry, and free of debris. Uh, so we broomed off the surface so there was no loose debris. Uh, it's relatively clean and it's definitely dry inside of the, the photo shoot here. So, um, you know, it's pretty much the same thing is gonna occur. We just wanna give you a visual representation of what's gonna look like on a, on a non-porous substrate compared to the porous substrate from the, from the Energy 3. And, I'll, and I'm gonna talk through um, the specific coverage rates with different substrates later on. Um, however, our, you know, what substrates is this compatible with? Obviously we were showing it on our paper-faced ISO earlier, and now we're showing it on a coated glass facer product. Um, what about straight to concrete? I'm thinking on vertical surfaces, maybe straight to plywood, things like that. Uh, can you run through the, the substrates that it's compatible with? Yep, both of those are gonna work. Concrete, uh, plywood, or OSB, uh, your, your gypsum cover boards from that perspective, um, kind of round out the, the majority of the surfaces that this is going to be sprayed off, okay. sprayed on. finished surface of PVC. Is that okay? How, how, what's the best way to clean that off? I mean, I, it's always gonna be best practice, Derek, to protect from that. Also, you know, had we been in a production environment, we, one of these sides would have been a lap line where we needed some weld. So we would have like marked that off either with a board or something like that. But since we did get it on here, uh, that same membrane cleaner is gonna be the best, you know, just a, a lint-free rag and some of that low VOC membrane cleaner. We'll get this right off.
So now to demonstrate the different uh, spray widths you get with the different nozzles that we talked about earlier, uh, we're, we're gonna show each of those. We actually already sprayed one of them, the 6501 that we've got written down. And as you can see, it's about a nine inch spray pattern on that. Can you describe one, first off, what the 6501 stands for, and then uh, kind of what, what we're doing with the, these last two? Yeah, the, the 65 is gonna be the degree of the spray angle as it comes out of the nozzle. And the 01 has to do with like the orifice size about how much adhesive that it's letting out in the process. So uh, 65 degree angle, angle we held the nozzle about 15 inches off the deck so that we could be nice and consistent and now we're moving into the 8001 nozzle and the 8001 nozzle is the standard nozzle that is coming with our pre-assembled guns and all three of these are available in the five packs for order and replacement correct yep. that is correct and it's an 8001 lp which just stands for low pressure okay so we're gonna come in again, 15 inches off the deck. Put that fan out. So as you can see, it's a slightly larger spray pattern, about another two inches. Two inches. All right, so now we're going to the third nozzle, the 9501 LP. Uh, when, would, when, when would someone be using this? I mean, this one is going to be whenever you have the most still conditions, you know, like um, it's going to give you the widest pattern, but it's also going to be the most susceptible to being blown around by the wind. So I'm going to come in at that same angle, same height off the deck. And it looks like we probably got about another inch, inch and a half of... Uh, width on that one versus the ADO one LP.